When veterans in Polk County need help, one of the places they can count on is a local nonprofit organization that's been serving those who served our country since 2008. Some of the things that they offer are veteran housing and case management to those who served our nation. They can also help veterans transition back into society by providing basic needs with assistance for rent, utilities, health care, referrals, and mortgage assistance, just to name a few. That nonprofit organization and their story is coming up next on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Brian Lacey, and joining us in studio is Cynthiana Clark. She's the executive director for Clark's House Incorporated. How are you doing, Cynthia? I'm good. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. And also joining us is John Quirk III. John is a program support uh, specialist at uh, Clark's House Incorporated. How are you doing, John? Doing great. Thank you. All right. Uh, Cynthiana, can you tell us a little bit about Clark's house. Now we know it got started in 2008, mm -hmm. but how did, how did it begin? Well, my husband actually had a vision in 2005, and I was working um, as an executive director for another nonprofit. So from 2005 to 2008, it was a thought. 2008, we actually decided this is what we need to be doing, so we um, incorporated as a 501c3, and we actually got a house on 1310 Atlantic Road where we were housing homeless men at the time. Um, during this time, our purpose was having more of a recovery, substance abuse, transitional, clean and sober environment. And over the last two years, from 2008 to 2010, we determined that the majority of our clients were veterans. So we did a needs assessment again, we restructured, and found ourselves serving veterans. That was the, the population that we were constantly seeing um, in a revolving door. So. Um, in 2013, we officially opened up Clark's House to the community because prior to this, it was just a hobby, a passion. I worked, my husband overseeing the facility. Um, and when we decided to change it over to, to switch it over to a community-based organization where we got more partners, we realized um, we were missing a bigger picture with the veterans. So um, I wrote the grant for SSVF um, with the help of Gina no, no. Cox. For those, uh, we, Supported what exactly? Services for veterans and their families. Okay. <laughs> um, we were partnering with the town at the with the county, um, and Gina Cox and I um, worked together to get the grant done, um, and we were awarded eight hundred and eleven eight hundred and eleven five twelve thousand dollars. So we were in a rush to get facilities, to get staff, and we have been running ever since. Our original goal was 161 veterans for 2013, 2014. We actually served 211 um, families with a 87% success. And when I say 87 su success rate, our only goal is, is housing. We're not interested if the client has substance abuse, if they have a criminal background, uh, we don't care if their children's been taken away from them. If they're veteran and they're eligible, Clark's House's primary goal is to get them housed. Once we get them housed, then we bring in other um, community-based organizations to meet the additional needs of the family. Part of the VA's administration is, is to get veterans off the street. Um, VA under the SSVF program is probably one of the only programs right now under the rapid rehousing focusing on um, a housing first initiative, which basically say our only goal is to house the, the client. We're not, we're not consumed in anything else. We don't want them to go get clean and then we're gonna get them housing. We don't want them to stop drinking and then go get housing. We want to put them in housing. And once we get them in housing through a housing stability plan, we want to work towards the issues that got them homeless. Talk about, uh, you guys seem to be a, a, a hand up, not a, a hand, hand out. out. Correct. Um, to veterans, talk about the importance. There, there are so many of them that that fall through the cracks, mm -hmm. and it, it's just unbelievable that the service that they gave to this country, that, exactly, that they could even fall through these cracks. Well, it's unfortunate, but across the country, it's it's the same um, dilemma. 
most of our veterans are coming back feeling out of place. And when we say more so our assistance, our assistance is not to judge, we're not to criticize, meaning it's real easy to be focused on when you find a, a veteran that's homeless in a camp or shelter or even on the streets with a sign. It's real easy to see what you see right then. What our goal is, we need to see beyond that. We understand that you know post-traumatic stress disorder could have things to do with why they're out there. So could substance abuse. Um, so can just life disappointments. We're not interested in making the client feel less than what they already feel. We want the client to feel encouraged. We want them to be hopeful. You know, we have had clients that's been homeless for years prior to Clark's house and didn't want housing. That was not even you know, on their radar. Um, they were more consumed with having this homeless camp or ha having this homeless environment where the other people that were homeless were their families. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot for us to get out there with our outreach team to, to gain their trust, to get them to see we weren't gonna judge them because they have been judged already. Um, we weren't gonna put them in a box and just close it and let that be the end of it. We genuinely wanted them to have housing if they want. And only a very small percent to date has denied um, that option. That's their choice. So for us, I feel like um, my family's background is veterans. I feel like for everything they've gone through and to come back and things have changed sometimes, they've been um, served with divorce papers while they're gone. Um, there's mediation for the children. The families are not the same. The, the, the people in the service generally come back with things that's going on with them. It's very difficult to put in words. It's very difficult to transition. Um, and if they're in positions of high, high power, they're taught and trained not to communicate about what exactly happened. So for us, it's more or less gaining their trust for them to see we're not trying to you know, dig deep to, to get their secrets. We're trying to figure out a way to just get them housed and then from that point, make sure they're VA connected, um, make sure if they're entitled to benefits, they're receiving them. If they need to be, go to the doctor, that they have access to doing that. So it's a holistic approach for us. John, you go out on the front lines. Um, for lack of a better word, you, you, you soldier to soldier with them. Yes. Um, I think something that, that the residents of this county don't realize, that there are homeless camps and, and, and these veterans are really they, they feel at ease rather you know in that camp rather than than in some place with four walls talk about what the, the environment the the living standards talk about what you see out there with the veterans it's even a little different than the regular home the normal non-veteran homeless people when we go into the woods and you you approach a camp you can kind of tell before you even get there that it's a veteran, whether it's a veteran or not. They probably have a flag up somewhere. Um, they keep their area clean. Um, they take the trash out. They sweep the, the dirt. They get their, their camp is set up and they are taking care of other people in the area as well. Um, being a veteran myself, um, I can really relate to what they're going through and what they're experiencing. We're taught and it's ingrained in us that we, whether you're a man or a woman, you're, you're supposed to be able to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and, and others. Um, so when they're facing this, they're, they're, they're thinking, okay, I'm in this situation, but I'm gonna do what I can, to, I'm gonna do what I have to do to, to make th things work. And um, a lot of the veterans that I see, that they have things that they, they don't wanna share. Um, there was one gentleman I've talked to repeatedly um, he said when he got, he had an apartment at one time, but when he felt like the walls were closing in on him and he was more comfortable living in the woods. Um, but other gentlemen and women, they just, something happened, they lost their job, um, uh, maybe they lost a spouse or um, just something happened in their life at one point and they ended up being homeless and they're doing the best they can to make ends meet and they just, it's just a situation. It's not, mm -hmm. it's, homelessness is an address. That's it. It's where they are. And they're trying to better themselves. There's a stigma out there that a lot of people believe that, uh, oh, they're homeless is because they're a drug addict and they're an alcoholic mm -hmm. and they're just using their money to get high or get drunk. And a, a lot of the veterans that we've met, that's not the case. 
and there are there there are some there that is the case, but that's what what Cynthia was small, saying. A very small percent, um, and just to tap into what he say regarding um, homelessness, um, many of our veterans don't choose to be homeless, and I think that's um, that's a, that's part of the society stigma. Um, when trans, when things happen in our life, sometimes we don't have the resources that we need right. to get where we're trying to go. Um, there are some veterans that's homeless that have PhDs that are very articulate, that are very intelligent, that have come from very good backgrounds. And either they lost their jobs, their hours were cut, a separation took place, their, their jobs closed down, and they found themselves in a situation where they didn't have the resource, they weren't aware of what was out there, um, and they find themselves homeless. I also want to say on their behalf, because they've given us the freedom to be here where we are doing what we're doing, um, I, I personally believe that we should look at them as what they are, humans. I, I think homeless people should be looked at as humans. I think Richard Gere said it best in his movie. When you're homeless, people tend to treat you different. They tend to look down on you. They tend to um, come up with these preconceived ideals of why you're where you are. And all a homeless man, woman, and children as families, they just want to be seen as a human being who just right now who may need some help. And some of the help isn't long term, some of it's very short term. Sometimes it's just a security deposit or helping them get their lights on or, or referral for food. Um, I think we as a community, we need to start looking at people as, as real people. These are not numbers. These are, these are people. They have names attached to them. You understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh, believe me. Um, one of the things that, that I really respect is, is you guys work hand in hand with veteran agencies mm -hmm. within the county, whether it be uh, Polk County Veterans Council or our own uh, Polk County Veterans Services. Mm -hmm. Talk about those partnerships and, and the alignments to make sure that everybody succeeds and, and, and that we all walk through this together. I think for us that the biggest gap that we had to bridge um, when we first started was making sure one duplication of services was not happening. Um, two, being able to work with the, the county as a whole, originally they were our primary partner and, and we are so grateful for them because without having the planning department and uh, Marcia Anderson, I don't think we would be where we are or Gina Cox. They were very very much in, in a thousand percent support of us. Um, having the relationship with Mike Mason and his team, but the relationship goes beyond that. We have to have a relationship with the VA clinics. We have to have relationships with the Jane Taylor Hospital. We have to have relationships with the HUD VASH case managers. We have to have a relationship with business owners, with um, um, social service agencies. We can't do it by ourselves. And what we like to do is we like to, once we get the veteran, make sure that the resources that they need are there. And it's through our housing stability plan because every veteran doesn't need the same thing. So our partnerships extend beyond um, just the, the norm. Um, it could be a food bank. It could be a faith-based organization. It can be an individual. We have a wonderful gal named Emily who, mm. who, who is so passionate about working with the um, homeless and with the veterans. And actually, she just got the key to the city from um, Mayor mm. Wiggs about a month or so ago. Um, I'm going to say her name again, Emily Cornelius, because she's been wonderful to us. But it's, that's a student. That's, that's a student partnership. People really do care about the veterans. And we just want to be able to end homelessness by, for the veterans by 2015. And we're hoping we can make that happen. Let's talk about some of those services that you supply. We have just a little bit of time left. Um, what could the veterans look to you for uh, when coming to you and saying, I need help? What are some of the things that you can help well, them with? Well, it depends. Um, they can get help with their um, utilities, rent, security deposits, um, depending on if their job requires them to have certain uniforms or boots, we can help them with things like that, moving costs, child care. Um, we just finished up the project a couple of weeks ago for a mortgage, and I thank um, George Jenkins Foundation and Givewell, George Jenkins Foundation and Givewell Foundation for that, um, because we were the first program in Polk County that was able to pay mortgages for veterans, which is a huge thing. Um, they get in comprehensive case management, when most people think of case management, they just think of, okay, the person comes in, they fill out this form, 
and then we have to make them fill 10 out 10 other forms out to get to point a we just need to know what you need right then and there because that's our only goal if it's housing or to keep you into housing which is if it's rapid rehousing or prevention that's what we want to do and once we um, do both of them because now we're actually doing what I call drive-bys to clients who for prevention meaning that we want to make sure they live in the hab habitable place before we pay that vendor yeah. which is the landlord if it's a place where if it's a situation where we're housing the person we want to also engage the person and the landlord and that whole process what is the rights of the um, the, the tenant what is the rights of the landlord we also do um, workshops we, we give out clothing. There's special circumstances where if a client needs something that's not on the list, we will reach out to partners to um, other VFS char uh, chapters to try to make things happen. We've been able to give clients bicycles. We're working on a project now where a bunch of youth want to give a veteran a car and we want them to pick the veteran that they want. So there's, there's multiple things to what we can do to list them. I would, I would take more than 15 minutes. One of the <laughs> things that I hear you saying um, whether it be volunteers, community partners as far as uh, businesses, or just individuals giving mm -hmm. of, them time, of their time or, or their resources, money. Talk about the importance of the community taking care of, it, of its own and how they can help you. Well, one of the things I learned, and I have to give full credit to this um, from my regional coordinator, which is um, Jill Van Heel, but her name has changed to Alabinis, and I hope I'm saying that right. Prior to getting involved with the SSVF, I really didn't get have a, a, a true grasp on how important it is to bridge those, those gaps with um, community partnerships. And SSVF has been wonderful in giving us the tools, giving Clark's House the tools to know how to go about having that conversation. Keep in mind that what Clark's House is doing is we're going down out to the community and saying, we don't want to do it the way we used to do it. We don't want the client to jump this hoop to get over here. We just want the client to be housed. Well, many of our, um, our partners' funding is based on them having these, these hoops. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Say, for instance, that before a mother can get her children back, she had to do A, B, and C. Yes, ma'am. But if that mother comes to us and she needs housing, we're only concerned in getting her housing. Exactly. So I think what I have learned in the last three years, how important it is to ensure that our partners constantly understand what housing first mean and rapid rehousing. I also have to make sure that I'm a part of the bigger picture. It's not about Clark's house, it's about how do we better this community by ending homelessness in general, our portion by ending homelessness among veterans. And how do we go to our stakeholders and really give them a good outcome as to if this is working. So I think for Clark's House, our um, continuous goals and, and um, objectives is to bring as many partners to the table, continuously share on what we have found to work and be willing to assist them if they're willing to make that transition. So a lot of humbling of ourselves um, and ensuring that we're not throwing things down people's throat but that we're working in conjunction to what the ultimate goals are, and that's ending homelessness. John, I'm gonna give you the last word on this. <laughs> I get um, too excited. Like, like I said, man, you're, you're the guy out there on the front lines. Um, inspire those at home to get involved and, and give that, that, that hand up, not a hand out, um, to support these veterans who, who have sometimes have, have paid the ultimate price. Mm. For me, it, I was inspired to even work in this office by this woman here and Paul, Cynthia and Paul, they, they have such great hearts for the veterans. They've reached out and to me, I've seen the families that they went and picked up on Christmas Eve one year and got them into a hotel so, until they could get a house. And it's, it's that, that family just needed a little bit and they were able to provide that. And to me, that is the biggest difference that we can make in our community is just not walking by the veteran that's sitting there asking for help, not, not accepting that they have to be there. Just we can reach out and let them know that there are people who care mm. and that we are willing to help them with what's needed. John, Cynthiana, uh, as a veteran myself, I. I thank you 
for everything that you do for my brothers and sisters. Uh, and I really appreciate everything that you do in this community. Thank you so much. And I just want to inspire any veteran, whether you're homeless or not, if you need anything, please feel free to call us 24 hours a day, 863-940-9977. Um, there's an after-hour number there once you call, but whatever we can do to help you, that's what we're here for. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And, you know, since its inception in 2008, Clark's House has provided basic needs like food, shelter, and donated clothing to homeless veterans, at-risk veterans, and their families within the Polk County community. Their programs are geared to provide a hand up and not a handout to veterans and their families. In 2013, Clark's House was awarded the SSVF, the Supportive Services for Veterans Families, grant for the first time. Since that time, Clark's House has assisted over 300 veterans families with obtaining and or retaining permanent housing. Now, for more information on how you can help Clark's House, give them a call at 863-940-9977 or look them up on the web at www.clarkshouse.org.